All right, I guess I will post a story or two if that's fine. This one obviously isn't mine, but is a retelling of the Pensacola Sea Serpent encounter. I'm gonna do it in green text, cause I like green text. March 24, 1962, Pensacola, Florida. Five teens want to go freediving off the wreck of the USS Massachusetts. The five teens, all male, are, Eric, 16, Warren, 17, Larry, 15, Brad, 14, and finally, Edward McCleary, 16, who is the one recounting the story. The USS Massachusetts is about two miles off the coast, on a sandbar. Because of this, part of the wreck can be seen sticking out of the water. They grab a raft, change into their bathing suits, spot the part of the wreck sticking out of the water, and start paddling towards it. The water is extraordinarily cold. On their way to the ship, a storm starts coming in. They decide to paddle back to shore, but they instead get washed out to sea. They tried to wave down a boat for help, but the boater was apparently retarded and just waved back. They instead decide to tie onto a nearby buoy and wait out the storm. Their boat capsizes, but they manage to flip it over and climb back on. They wait out the storm, the sea finally becomes calm. Everything goes completely silent, and a heavy fog rolls in. They all sit there and make small talk for a bit, waiting for the fog to disperse so they can paddle back. The water around them becomes much warmer. Larry hears something in the distance, and tells everyone to shut up and listen. Suddenly, the smell of dead fish hits them, and they hear a massive splash. The waves from this splash were big enough to break over the side of their raft. Through the fog, they see something that looked like a 10-foot-tall, telephone pole, emerge from the water, straighten up, pause for a moment, then arch and dive back underwater. They all get confused, especially being that they didn't even properly see the thing due to the fog. McCleary jokes that it was a sea monster. Why would you say that? PNG. They start hearing a high-pitched hiss, which sounds like it is getting closer and closer with each succession. They all understandably panic. They decide to put on their diving fins, and jump into the water. This part sounds a bit odd, being that it seems like no sane human would jump into the water with a supposed sea monster. McCleary later justified this, claiming they were all terror-stricken, and feeling the need to escape, decided to leave the tiny raft. McCleary tells everyone to swim for the wreck of the USS Massachusetts. Behind them they hear more splashing and that weird hissing sound. The fog starts to clear up, but the water starts to get colder, rougher, and night starts to fall. Every once in a while, Eric would call back to make sure everyone was fine. Eventually, they hear a scream lasting about 30 seconds from behind them. They hear Warren call out, help me, help me, it's got Brad. I've got to get out of here. Warren's voice was suddenly cut off by his own screams. Everything goes silent. They can't find Warren and Brad. Not able to do anything, the three remaining boys continue swimming. After a while, McCleary looks around, and realizes he can't see Larry. They dive down, trying to search for him underwater. They can't find him. They decide to keep on swimming. Eric starts sinking due to cramps, so McCleary grabs onto him and they swim together. It's the dead of night now, and everything is pitch black. Nearby lightning lights up the area, and they find that they are pretty close to the USS Massachusetts. A giant wave separates the two, but both keep swimming for the ship. As lightning lights up the area once again, McCleary sees the telephone pole-like figure break the water, open its mouth, and dive on top of Eric, dragging him down into the sea. McCleary describes the creature as having a neck that was about 12 feet long, brownish-green, and smooth-looking. The head of the creature looked like that of a sea turtle, only elongated and with a ton of small sharp teeth. He did not see any fins on the creature's sides, but claimed that he saw a dorsal fin on its back as it was diving. The eyes looked green with oval pupils. McCleary pulls himself onto the wreck of the ship, and stays there for a while. There is no sign of Eric. He eventually works up the courage to get back into the water and swim the two miles to shore. He claims that he did not remember swimming back to the shore, but instead imagined himself peacefully sinking to the bottom of the sea and laying on the soft sand. Interestingly enough, this sort of blissful peace is also reported by surviving drowning victims. Eventually, he finds himself back on the beach. He finds the strength to pull himself out of the surf. He finds a nearby tower that he climbs into and falls asleep in. He sleeps for a while, hearing strange voices in his head throughout the entire night. He wakes up, falls out of the tower, and some kids find him face down on the beach. He gets sent to a nearby hospital. 
Hospital claimed he was suffering from shock and exposure. The director of a search and rescue team comes in to talk to McCleary. McCleary tells him the story, of which the director surprisingly believes. A news crew also interview McCleary, but decides not to run a story about the sea monster. According to Coast Guard reports, McCleary swam for over 5 miles, and was in the water for nearly 12 hours. Interestingly, the news article altered this fact, claiming that McCleary only swam 2 miles, I have no idea why they would fabricate something this mundane. A body washes ashore a couple days later, it's the body of Brad. Autopsy report claims that Brad drowned. That's the end. To my knowledge, they never found the bodies of the other kids. Oddly enough, there have been reports of similar-looking sea monsters off Mobile, Alabama, which is only 58 miles away. It's a pretty interesting story, and is convincing enough in some ways to make me think that McCleary either saw, or thinks he saw, a sea monster.